uh, students, uh, you all know that uh, we always have our selected candidates in our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, there we post their journey to just make you understand that uh, what what is this journey about and uh, what mistakes you should not make and what what are the lessons to be learned and uh, in that sequence today i have sherlyn and she's from kerala and uh, uh, in the discussion i would like to focus on small things that actually matter a lot to the students and that will help uh, the students so uh, we do these talkings less for advertisement, but more from for uh, you know for the benefit of the students. So, Sherlyn, welcome to Pravega Education. Thank you, sir. So, first of all, congratulations for your uh, selection. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you qualified JRF, and uh, uh, many many congratulations from Pravega family. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Sherlyn, we would like to know uh, that. Uh, uh, what was your journey? Uh, uh, how is your journey? Uh, we can see your journey starting from your graduation. So uh, just tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so, sir, I completed my graduation from Providence Women's College, Calicut. It was affiliated to the Calicut University. Uh, later, I took the JAM coaching from the Physics Institute. Okay. You guys were also there at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I went to IIT Patna for my MSc. I qualified JAM. And later, while I was doing my MSc, I started in 2018 and the course duration was till 2020. So okay. that's the time the COVID started. Yeah, yeah. So it was like we just stuck with without knowing what to do next. So right. the foreign universities all stop their admissions and also the Indian universities are like the net exam didn't conduct it for a long time that time. Yeah. So immediately after that, I, uh, nearly one year it took. So I was like, I was sitting at home and doing nothing. So I saw an advertisement for an net tech company. I applied and I got the job. So it was mainly for their uh, position of subject matter expert to say. So okay. we just have to prepare the materials and okay. go through that Con content basically. Yeah, hmm. more or less. So okay. I, I did that and nearly after one year, I applied for a school. In that school, they were choosing uh, the faculties for their foundation courses as well as the school courses. So it's a special division, uh, which they call the career foundation faculty. Okay. So they are, they were only selecting the IIT graduates for that position. So they were paying well also. So I applied for that. Then I get into that job. So once you are into that loop, I mean, getting a handsome salary and, you know, when you, you have got the habit of spending. So how you came out of that loop uh, for higher education? I mean, that is a bit tough. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it was very difficult decision to make, first of all, to decide. Huh. But the problem was being stagnant was more difficult. Okay. Means being in that loop is like, yeah, I am teaching the students, but they are the school students. I literally didn't open the reference books, which I enjoyed reading for nearly two years. Yeah. And also I... I'm not getting anything new. I'm teaching the same basic things to the student. And I felt like nothing is moving around me. It just stays in the same place. Okay. It was, what to say, it, I'm a little scared of that to say. Okay. So, is so there, was there any trigger or, I mean, it was a slow decision uh, that was taken? One thing I have to say, from my parents' point of view, if I say that I resign, they will be like, what will you do after that? Uh, so, one thing I could say, I got married. So, wow. my husband is more or less like, he will be like, you can do beyond this. Okay. You don't have to and complete your career. So, I he, thought... He, he was the driving force behind this. Yeah, I could say that. Okay. Very good. So, uh, because that is the journey of, uh, uh, I mean, I, I would not say most of the students, but many of the students immediately after graduation, they uh, start teaching or 
uh, i mean they they take a short term decision and then get stuck into that so that that was very good i think the family support was excellent and uh, i i remember one thing that uh, even you could have j- uh, done this course uh, sitting in kerala online but uh, uh, even i mean that was a bit surprise for us also that you came all along uh, delhi and you reside in gsri and did most of the portion of the course offline so what was the uh, i mean thinking thought process behind that but i know myself and i think it's not only me most of our attention span while we are attending an online class and offline class is quite different Okay. While we are doing an online class, we have lot of, uh, use, uh, let's say we have a lot of things going around, like right. distractions. People will be walking Background around. Background noise, room. you can say. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's because sometimes even, you know while teaching also some mic is on, so behind that some TV is there or some you know people are talking. So even we are surprised that how students will manage to. Uh, even though for those students who are uh, sitting in a peaceful uh, place and they are little bit focused i mean it's different for different students uh, i would say means those who can't do online they must join offline so that's why i i am quite sure that i will not able to <laughs> do it perfectly online okay. so i chose to go offline right right and one uh, issue is there that uh, coming down from uh, you know uh, kerala and living in delhi so sometimes you know uh, students sitting in kerala they will think about that uh, how the food will be how the atmosphere will be wh- whether the friends will uh, i mean they will be uh, helping us or uh, means all sort of things are there in mind in even in the minds of the parents so what you would you would say about that so sir i could say the place where the institution is there it's more or less a safe place when we come there mostly there are students some families right. and right. institutions that's what we have there so it's safe to stay there right and i could say if i want to say a negative thing i could say it's a bit expensive right uh, because it's such an area where the institutions are pgs are there the rent or what put is actually cheap we can right. get it in cheap rate uh, but the rent is quite expensive right. over because, there so because that's it's located in south delhi so that's why uh, i mean that that is always an issue mm. okay so and, that's the and uh, uh, about food food sir i can adapt because i stayed in patna for 2 years and i ha- i'm having very similar food there <laughs> okay. and i think it's not an issue if someone the food is thirsty we can have it it's good it's just that it's a bit different from what we have at our home right the way we because prepare. it's all together a different place and place uh, and a culture yeah that's so, it but the food was good it was so is it hard to acclimatize I, i would say is it hard no it's not okay so we can I mean, adapt yeah means students uh, from uh, uh, because initially we uh, you know we had only offline coaching if we talk uh, before covid you have seen that time yeah and there was no online thing so all students from tamil nadu kerala and karnataka all they will come to delhi and because no option was available right now there is an option so student should not take that option which which is not suitable for them for example if you are not good in uh, attention and you you can't uh, make yourself very disciplined then i think offline is a better option mm-hmm. and, and uh, then- one thing more about the language because when we receive calls from kerala from new students who are uh, willing to join us so uh, uh, it's there in mind about hindi and english uh, means language of edu- so what you can say about that is it uh, as far as i think i can't talk about now because now i am very familiar with hindi i can understand even if you speak hindi right. but when i did my jam coaching huh. that time i was completely new to this okay. that time also i didn't find it any difficult to understand in the classes okay only certain things like i do remember one sadhu sir said one word like kamba in class <laughs> so i we some kerala students were sitting there 
So huh. Sar was explaining the entire process, and all of us were discussing what is kabba. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay, but Sar realized it and he explained it in English also. A few things of uh, you know, like uh, something joke or something like that, maybe in yeah. Hindi because that is uh, Hindi is also our uh, you know <laughs> mother tongue. But otherwise, I think as far as physics is concerned, understanding open, concept is there is no problem with understanding the concept in the class because most of the time teachers use English only. We are learning physics and we are using maths and teachers mostly use the English words and they teach in English also. Especially your class is completely in English, so it, there was no difficulty in understanding. So, uh, my, for, for, uh, with me, what is the problem? Either I would speak complete Hindi. And then I will use lot of idioms and phrases, so that will be very very difficult. So that's why I try to be in you know keep everything in English. I have one thing more that uh, uh, what when you see now retrospectively, uh, what you think you what right thing you did, uh, which ended up getting you uh, qualified in this exam. What are those right things? Otherwise, you could have lost it. So one thing I could say, I didn't go for anything else. I just stick to the class. Okay. Uh, because if I, I have very less time. It's nearly five months or six months of time. Right. I want to. I am more or less like, like a fresher since I had a four years of. Because gap. you had a, a, bit, a gap of I think two years or three years gap. It's three and a half, sir. Nearly three and a half years gap, right? And um, when I say three and a half, most of the syllabus in our coursework was covered in first year of my MSc. Right. So second, second year, year of my MSc doesn't have any of this. Huh. So I didn't have any of this. We had some other topics. So right. it's it was like I forgot literally 90% of the topics and whatever was in it. Even though I know a bit, but I cannot say if I am preparing for an exam, it's a huge task. I right. have to be clear about everything. So when I joined the course, first thing I decided was I I'm not going to go for any reference book or anything unless it is necessary. Huh. Sometimes it is uh, in bits and pieces it is required. That's why yeah. all the faculties of Pravega they uh, they give the references from where they are teaching. Hmm. Uh, I mean, even if sub topic is there and I am teaching from somewhere else, I I would give the reference. So that because if something plus minus you want to see some you are stuck in between you can go to the reference book and see it. Otherwise, the course is very comprehensive. I guess I mean there is very yes, less sir. requirement of. Means I used to read them while I was doing MSc, but doing that all over again will actually consume a lot of time. Right. So I only went for reference book when it is absolutely necessary. For example, like I'm not at all clear about what is going on. Right. Then I will just read that part only. Then I will come back to the class books and all whatever we did. And the second thing, I never missed a class. I tried my maximum not to miss any yes, class. Yes, that was very good. Even idea. if I couldn't attend on offline, I will at least do it online. That that uh, we always talk about that. Like the first symptom is for a serious student is like you are attending each and every class. Even that becomes difficult for many students. They, they they are not consistent. So that is like a suggestion to all of the students. I mean, studying anywhere. That uh, the first thing is that you should be and those who are doing offline, just don't be dependent on the recorded videos. I mean, that time which is lost. Uh, seeing that video after the class will not add that much. Uh, because I remember one thing about you is that uh, you you will ask even small doubts. Whatever doubts were there in your mind that you will ask those questions. So can you tell me about uh, the uh, faculties of Pravega? I mean, what was their response uh, to the doubts uh, and uh, are the doubts clear? In yes, sir. It was clear, very clear. I, at least I do remember even in many classes, I asked the same question twice or thrice. Like, sir, explain it once and I'll say I didn't understand it. Then he explained it once again. I nearly went for three or four times for the same thing at the same time. Okay. So, it, 
that was a blessing which i got from pravega that they never get angry or teachers don't feel that i should not ask this question in the class as long as it is even a simple thing the teachers will patiently explain the things whatever i ask for so, so it was really our helpful thinking actually when we sit together that it's not a problem you ask same question again if you could not understand the sometimes only uh, uh, when we see that the time of other student is wasted because of some unnecessary things so that we discourage that you can ask it personally you can call us so that because that time is a total time of all the students so that should not be wasted in other things except the uh, uh, you Focus. are you know you are focusing on a particular exam so that time should not be wasted only that concern is there sometimes hmm. okay so now what are your plans uh, uh, because you are now uh, eligible for uh, you know uh, to apply for assistant professor uh, at the same time you are also eligible for uh, you know you have fellowship mm -hmm. and you can apply for uh, as a phd student so what are your plans there i currently have two options at hand either i will go for phd or i uh, think of i'm thinking about joining as an assistant professor in some colleges okay uh, so the first thing is like if i am doing phd i want to do it in a very means some topic which is really good and also in some institute which is reputable Okay. So I don't want to do my PhD from any university. Huh. I just want to do it in a proper way, in a proper subject, and I want to make an impact on it if I am doing it. Right. So, so I definitely because, because now the uh, forms will come from all the IITs and IACRs, IC Bangalore, and Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, and even you know like. Uh, IACR Trivandrum is there, and other is reputed is IACR Pune is there. So Raman Research Institute is there in Bangalore. So uh, you can see your research areas and just make a list of the institutes. And I think prepare well for interview. Uh, apart from you know uh, objective type questions, now you can look for uh, some topics in in the textbook. Uh, because mm -hmm. now you will have to explain the things so uh, that would be my suggestion to you and uh, i think just make a list of good institutes and don't rely on single institute because sometimes it is difficult luck is not with you so you might not get that but if you uh, just make a list of uh, few institutes five or six institutes which you are okay with and the research area is very important that select the research area and even you can select the faculties that uh, you want to work with so that will be my suggestion uh, okay thank so thank you so much uh, sherlin it was nice talking to you i think this uh, uh, this talk will be very very helpful to the students who are going to write this exam in future thank you so much